Holyoke-based Common Capital is an organization that works to make dreams come true by assisting local businesses to get started and grow. Common Capital CEO Chris Seitz came in to tell us more about their mission, expressed in the motto, Local Investment, Shared Future. It really does tell our story, Jim. And first of all, thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. Uh, local investment, it really is that we can, as a community, invest in ourselves. And by investing in ourselves, then we have a real control of our future. So that's, that's the heart of what Common Capital is really about, is taking out any resources that we can and putting them out into the community with the most impactful, in the most impactful way. You know, I thought about the interview. We've had you in a few times, and you know, the common capital story is not foreign to me. But you know, I just try to you know sure. reduce it down in my own head. You're about giving people with a dream and a plan. Got to have, can't just have the dream. But without access to the seed money or cash, you're about putting them together with the capital they need to try and make that dream slash plan happen. Right. So uh, Common Capital is a nonprofit, and we've been around now for about 28 years. And we started out as a, what's called a micro-enterprise loan fund, where we provided a lot of business assistance. Because just as important as capital is knowing how to use the capital and knowing how to run a business. And so we help people put together the business plans. And we help people help find their markets and learn what their projections would be. And really how to manage a business is so key. And then we provide loans. And we started, we had loans as high as $5,000. Now we go up to $300,000. And we deal with some startups, for sure. We do small businesses. We do growing businesses. And now we've grown into actually taking on even some other larger projects. We do, um, we've worked a lot with Develop Springfield. And we've also worked a lot um, in some housing deals. So what we are really see ourselves as is a, a community resource to bring finances, finance and capital into the region from wherever we can draw it from and really have as much impact with that to make a community a better place. Why don't these folks just go into any bank, they're on all the streets, and just sit down and talk to a loan officer? Doesn't really work that way necessarily in a lot of these cases, right? Um, no, I think there's, a, th being a nonprofit, we can do two things that a bank can't do. One is um, we work with the business and uh, get our hands into the business. A bank can't do that. They have what's called lender liability. They're regulated that way. And if the business fails, the business could blame the bank. Um, so the banks can't do what we can do. And the other thing is, is that we're a nonprofit. Um, we have, uh, we need grants to support what we do. We're not fully, um, we don't fully uh, pay for ourselves through the interest and fees from our loans. And a bank, obviously, is not a nonprofit. So um, but those two things together are the major reasons why we're different from the bank. We work very closely with the banks. The banks support us. They give us grants. They give us lines of credit. They've been great partners. Common Capital is what's called a CDFI, a Community Development Financial Institution. That's a big deal because that means the Federal Department of the Treasury looked at you guys and said, they're okay. They're, they're doing what they should. They're doing something good. We're going to back them up. That's important, but it occurs to me when there's a change in Washington, does that impact what you do? And, it, and there's big change now. We, we don't really know yet to some extent, what it's going to be. We, we've seen a, a very unusual federal budget proposal put out, which is a long way from passage sometime this fall. But still, where does that, or do, do you know at this point what any of this means to common capital? Well, we don't. And that's, a, that's one of the big problems um, we face. We do get uh, uh, capital from the US Treasury through the uh, CDFI fund, the Community Development Financial Institutes. Um, it's a lot of words, but it's been an extremely effective program into getting capital into low-income areas. Um, but we just don't know, under the current administration, what is going on. So um, it's ever more important for us to get support from other sources as well, and we, we always have. I think it's just put more of an emphasis on it. We have our Community First Fund, which takes local investments. That's been, I'll talk more about that, but that's okay. been very successful. Um, and the state's been a great partner with us, as well as foundations. Davis Foundation's been a big help with us as well. So um, we really 
take the monies that we can at different points, and we leverage that with bringing other outside capital in, banks or other outside uh, sources of capital, to get involved in local projects so we could bring capital into the region. Well, let's talk about that. You mentioned Community First Fund, and that is a chance for folks in the community to literally step up and help out and, and be part of what you do. It's been a, it was a surprise. We um, didn't have a Community First Fund three years ago, and um, it was that people started asking us and say, hey, can we invest? And we said, okay, we'll come up with a plan, and we're about a million dollars right now, and it's, we have done almost no marketing to this. I mean, we do some. We will be doing a lot more in the future, for sure, but um, it's been very successful. We have institutions now that are interested in, in investing. Just as people like to do the buy local now, there's a much greater consciousness of how important it is to invest locally and to know that your investment is going into something that's safe and having impact. And the Community First Fund is we, it's a very secured fund. When we've, we've done a lot with it. I know one area, not, not to be a downer, but one area you mentioned to me that you wanted to touch on and it's important for folks trying to get started or grow a business to be careful of predatory online business lending that's out there today. There can be real problems for folks. Oh, um, yeah, we became aware of it probably about a year, year and a half ago when we started seeing people applying to us for loans that were so deeply in debt. We, we just couldn't help them. I mean, and the problem with predatory lending is uh, for small businesses is, is a business needs the money, they can get a response and 24 hours or less, they can get the money in 48 hours, and then they don't even know their interest rate. They just know what their fees are, and they, they take money out of your, uh, right out of the checking account. Oftentimes, these, this predatory lending was at around 50%. So that's a lot of money. So what we decided to do in response to that is we would do online lending, and, um, but rather than charge 50%, we charge around 8%. Um, and we can make a loan decision in two days, and we can um, get a checkout generally within a week. So it's not as fast as predatory, uh, the on, uh, some of the online lenders, but it's very fast and it's all online. Um, and we're very ex and it's been a smash, a really big success. We can go up to twenty-five thousand dollars. If anybody's interested in that, you can just Google Common Capital. And as soon as you click on Common Capital, the first thing you'll see is what's um, called the Fast Track Program. And the Fast Track Program is the on our online lending program. Always fascinating. Chris Sykes, CEO at Common Capital, good to have you in, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tim.